in our last episode. Let's see. Are you a boy or a girl? Oh, James. We did it. She's in cardiac arrest. Start compressions. Get the baby out of here. Move, move. Come on over here, sweetie. Come on. Just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Happy birthday, honey. I can't believe you're already ten. As overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. Hey, forget him. Have fun. It's your birthday party. Are you ready for your surprise? Your own BB gun. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile. Boys and girls have different parts. I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? Like, I get any kind of special. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old girl. So, yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. But I'm sick. Really. (laughs) No, you're not. Really. When I started studying medicine, one of the first things I learned was how to spot a kid playing sick to get out of taking a test. You'll do fine. It's not so bad. Everyone has to take it when they're 16. I had to, you have to, and so does everyone else. And most everyone makes it through without a scratch. Anything I need to know about the GOAT? The Generalized Occupational Aptitude Test. GOAT. Everyone here in the Vault takes it when they're 16. Helps to figure out what sort of a job you'll have here in Vault 101 when you get a bit older. So, pay attention and try not to fall asleep. You know what the Overseer says? We're born in the Vault, we die in the Vault. Each is tested to determine their abilities, that they may work for the betterment of all Vault residents. Huh. Sound familiar? Do we have to die in the Vault? Can't we ever leave? That's not the way it works. And it won't do to go around asking questions like that. Especially not around the Overseer. I want to tell you something now. It's important, so listen closely. This place, this Vault, it's not perfect, I know. But it is your home. You're safe here. Stay on the Overseer's good side and you always will be. You understand? You need to appreciate all you have. Because what's up there, on the outside, that's not the life I want for you. And it's not what your mother wanted for you either. Is it true, Dad? Was everyone born in the vault? That's what the Overseer says, isn't it? He's not about to let anyone else in, so I guess that's how it'll have to be. You're here now, and it's a hell of a lot better than being up there. All your mother and I ever wanted was for you to be safe, and you're safe here. Can we talk about, you know, Mom? Your mother, she... she was beautiful. But beyond the beauty you've seen. There's just so much those old photos can never show. And she was passionate. About life, about love. But most of all, most of all, she was passionate about you. When she became pregnant, it was the happiest I had ever seen her. Ah, she had great things in mind for you. And so, time for you to stop stalling and get to class. Please, honey, please, take these achievement tests seriously. The last thing I need is your mother's ghost haunting me because her only child became a a garbage burner. If you say so, Dad. Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this year you take the goat. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Goodbye, Dad. Take care, sweetie. I got out of here, and good luck. Father sits down to work. While he's working, we can look over his shoulder to see what he's working on. Inside his terminal, we find two options. The first patient files, Freddy Gomez. Freddy's vault depressive syndrome is getting worse. 
Most days, he can't even get out of bed. When he does manage to function, Freddy hides his insecurities and low self-esteem behind a bully's mask. vault tech medical protocols dictate the prescription of anti-anxiety medication when vault depressive syndrome is involved, but do I really want to string the kid out on chlorpromazine for the rest of his life? Oh, this is sad. Freddy is Officer Gomez's son. Officer Gomez was so kind to us at the birthday party, but it sounds like Freddy is a little bit of a bully. Hate to see Gomez's son turn out that way. In the next one, Stanley. Stanley continues to suffer from severe chronic head pain. I've been feeding him aspirin like it's candy, but I'm reticent to give him anything stronger. He blames the lighting in his quarters, and though eye strain is certainly compounding the problem, the headaches are actually a symptom of overwork and lack of sleep. Knowing Stanley, and the schedule the overseer has him on, the problem isn't likely to get better anytime soon. So, it's aspirin indefinitely. Poor old Stanley. One of the few guys who attended the party that I actually liked. In the final one, Amada. Ooh, should we really read this? The medical files of our best friend? Eh, why not? Once again, the overseer has insisted on being in the room for Amada's examination, throwing any inkling of doctor-patient confidentiality right out the window. I know he doesn't trust me. He never has. But I honestly believe the reason he attends his daughter's medical appointments is because he doesn't trust her. That's as ridiculous as it is sad. Amata's a great girl, and the chance of her doing something stupid, pregnancy, syphilis, whatever, is so unlikely it's not even worth mentioning. Whew, thankfully, we didn't learn anything too scandalous about Amata, but having to be raised by a man like that? The poor girl. Out of patient logs, we can navigate through experiments. What? Our dad is experimenting? On what? Experiment 27 CE. The cells are still replicating normally. No mutagen, thank God. If whatever's out there could penetrate this vault, I can't even begin to imagine what the Overseer would do. So Vault 101 is working as a fallout shelter, and that's good news. And the next one, Experiment PP-216. PP-216? What could PP stand for? Perhaps we'll learn that later. After borrowing a few more water chips and rerouting some of the power here in the clinic, I've finally been able to affect the latest sample. It's not much, but considering what I have to work with, a definite step in the right direction. But this new experiment was also monumental for another reason. It's the first time Jonas has assisted me. He is suspected forever, I know. So I guess it was inevitable, and his help has been invaluable. I just hope he knows what he's gotten himself into. But Dad, what have you gotten yourself into? Conducting your own experiments using vault tech equipment behind the overseer's back? That can't end well. As we stand up to leave, Jonas walks in. Good morning. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Morning, Doc. How's things? Have you had a chance to look over these results? I was just going over them. Something you're worried about? I'd just like to keep an eye on it. No problem. I'll have my report ready this afternoon. Sounds good. Let me know if there are any changes. Good luck on the go. Well, I guess we'll leave Father and Jonas to work on whatever it is they are working on. Before we leave, though, we can grab the Medicine Bobblehead. You found a vault -Tec Limited Edition bobblehead. The inscription on the base reads, A smart man knows a bandage only hides his wounds. Your medicine skill has been permanently increased by 10 points. Heading out the door, we can overhear a conversation between Jonas and Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Sorry to keep you waiting. What seems to be the trouble today? I've got this headache that just won't go away. Even with the pills you gave me last week? It's the lights, I think. They hurt my eyes. That's still bothering you? Hmm. Well, I can run a few more tests if you like. Yes, I think I'd like that. Will it take long? Oh, shouldn't be too long. I just need to get things set up for you. Just sit tight and I'll be with you as soon as I can. I'm a little worried. <coughs> I hope Jonas can take a look at me soon. This corroborates what we read about Stanley's condition on Father's Terminal. I really liked Stanley. I hope Jonas can help him out. We don't find anything in the lockers, so heading out to the hallway, we see a congregation at the end of the hall. Looks like a bunch of thugs picking on Amada. I can show you a real tunnel snake, Amada. She's nothing, Butch. Get away from me! What's the matter? Daddy's girl gonna cry? She thinks she's better than us. Let's go into the storeroom, Amada. 
I'll show you a good time. You think you're special because your daddy is the overseer? She's nothing, Butch. <laughs> show it to her, Butch. Yeah? What do you want? Tunnel snakes? You guys are some kind of gang, is that it? Only the baddest gang in Vault 101. Like you don't know. We rule this vault, and what we say goes. Looks like you're having fun. Damn right. And you'll stay out of our way if you know what's good for you. No one messes with the tunnel snakes. Especially not this stuck-up little daddy's girl. What exactly is going on here? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Hey, it's none of my business. You've got that right. Just keep moving, and maybe we won't come looking for you next. Leave tunnel snake business to the tunnel snakes. I'll just be going now. Damn right you will. Get lost. Before we go, we can check in with Amada to make sure she's okay. Stupid tunnel snakes. Immature assholes if you ask me. Why won't they leave me alone? It's not my fault my father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Please? Look, Amada, this is none of my business. I don't want to get involved. Don't want to get involved? Thanks a lot. Fine, go. I don't need your help anyway. You have to fight your own battles. I can't help you with everything. Fight my own battles? Sure. Three against one is fair. What's gotten into you? I thought we were friends. Turns out you're just as big a jerk as these idiots. Butch and his friends bothering you again? A bunch of idiots if you ask me. They think they're so tough with their gang. All they ever do is hang around and cause trouble. They've got it in for me because my father is the overseer. Like, that's my fault. All right. I'll see if I can talk some sense into them. Thanks. You've always been a good friend. Try talking to Butch. They'll all do whatever he says. Yeah? What do you want? You know, Butch, maybe I can help. She's very sensitive about her weight. Her weight, huh? I can see why. You're okay, Pipsqueak. Now run along before you get hurt. Amada's got more chins than a Chinese phone book. I'm not fat! Gonna go cry to your daddy, fat ass? Amada's so fat, she broke her leg and gravy poured out. Hey, lard ass. Amada's not fat. She's just five feet too short. Amada's so fat, her clothes have stretch marks. Why would Watch you out. do that? Wide load coming through. You put on a couple of pounds, Amada? Careful. Amada might eat us. Hey, fatso, I got something you can put in your mouth. I heard what you said. Why would you do that? Just leave me alone. <laughs> or we can defend Amada by saying, leave her alone. Or you'll answer to me. And who are you? Her girlfriend? Ha! Should have known. Keep talking like that girl, and we'll send you back to your daddy with a few broken bones for him to fix. That's it, Butch. You and me, right now. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, tunnel snakes. This twerp needs another lesson. And we break out in a bout of fisticuffs. Butch and his tunnel snakes prove to be nothing more than a bunch of troublesome youngsters. Give her another hit! Not yet. Stop it! Give her another one! <clears throat> oh, yeah! This isn't solving anything! Hit her again! Fine, let's go. Okay, okay, you win. We'll leave the little girl alone. You're not worth our time anyway. Come on, tunnel snakes! We're out of here! But look at all of that blood. <laughs> After this, we'd have to call Father to come and take care of the guys, but they just walk inside the classroom as if nothing has happened. All right, then. Thank God that's over. Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father is the overseer, I guess? Idiots. And then Amana walks inside. Or instead of fighting them, we can try to defuse the situation. To do so, we have to pass a 50 speech check to say, if you keep messing with her, the overseer is going to come down on your gang. Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Come on, tunnel snakes. This, this little bitch isn't worth our time. You're enjoying it Whatever you say, future. Butch. You're the boss. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine, let's go. With that, they walk inside the classroom. 
With all the kids inside, it's time to follow and take our own exam. Heading inside, we're stopped by the teacher, Mr. Broch. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Oh, I'm feeling kind of sick, Mr. B. <laughs> Guess I'll have to reschedule. Didn't work on your dad either, did it? Now, unless you have something else you want to discuss, take a seat and prepare for the 2274 edition of The Goat. Come on, Mr. Broch. I don't really have to take this stupid test, do I? Listen, I like your dad. I might even like you if I wasn't your teacher. So here's what I'm going to do. If you want to skip the test, just tell me how you want it to come out, and I'll take care of it for you. Hey, cool. Let me see the results, and I'll fill it out myself. Well... All right. Here, take a look. In this way, we can very quickly skip the entire GOAT exam and choose three of our own tag skills. Or if we're not feeling up to it, we can say, The overseer's bullcrap is making my head spin. Can't you do it for me? Watch your language. And yes, I can do it for you. I can even hold your hand if you'd like. I just need to know what kinds of things you're interested in. We find an alternate way to fill out the same exam. Instead of tagging the skills ourselves, we just tell them what we're interested in. We can say, I love using computers and talking to my father's patients in the clinic. A budding science boy, eh? Done and done. There, you're all set. If anyone asks, you took the goat during detention yesterday, okay? If we choose this one, he tags medicine, science, and speech. Or we can say, well, I shoot my BB gun any chance I get. I can fix that thing blindfolded too. I'm sure I didn't just hear you admit to owning an unauthorized weapon. Let's just get this filled out. If we choose this one, he tags energy weapons repair and small guns for us. Or we can say, look, I love blowing stuff up. I just love that kaboom, you know? Okay. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. And with that, he tags big guns, explosives, and unarmed. Or finally, we can say, Mr. B, if I told you what my interests are, you'd have me locked up. I may know more about your extracurricular activities than you think, but not officially, of course. Officially, I'm completely oblivious. And if we choose this one, he tags lockpick, melee weapons, and sneak. Or we can choose to take the exam and say, sure, I'm ready. I bet I'll ace it. I'm sure you will, especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. Take your seat so we can get started. Before we take a seat, we can try to talk with some of our other classmates. You nervous? I'm not. I hope you weren't just talking to me. We're not friends. We're never going to be friends. Got it? Oh, hi. Uh, why are you talking to me? What? What do you want, nerd? Leave me alone, you little spaz. Buzz off, nosebleed. Thanks for your help, jerk. It's good to know I can count on you when I'm in trouble. This vault is just chock full of cheery personalities. Golly... To begin, we take a seat at the front of the class. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. Sure thing, Mr. Brach. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? The way this works is each question has four answers, and each answer secretly corresponds to a skill. Some of them are obvious and some of them less so. At the end of the exam, they tally up all of the skills, and the three with the most points become our tag skills. We have four ways to answer question one. We can say, but doctor, wouldn't that cause a parabolic destabilization in the fission singularity? This one counts for science. We can say, yeah, up yours too, buddy, which is speech. We can say nothing but grab a nearby pipe and hit the scientist in the head to knock him out. For all we knew, he was planning on blowing up the vault. That counts for melee. And finally, we can say nothing but slip away before the scientist can continue his rant. This counts for sneak. 
Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? We can amputate the foot before the infection spreads, which counts for melee, of course. We could scream for help, that's speech. Medicate the infected area to the best of our abilities, which is medicine. Or restrain the patient and merely observe as the infection spreads. That counts for science. Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? We could give the boy a hug and tell him everything will be okay. That counts for speech. Confiscate the stolen property by force and leave the boy there as punishment. That counts for unarmed. We could pick the boy's pocket to take the stolen property for ourselves and leave him to his fate. That counts for sneak. Or we can lead the boy to safety, but then turn him into the overseer. Strangely, this is the only answer within the first nine questions at any rate that doesn't count for anything. Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Pitcher counts for explosives. Catcher for big guns. Designated hitter is melee. And none, you wish the Vault had a soccer team instead, counts for, of course, unarmed. <laughs> Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? We could obey our elder and kill the vault resident with a pistol. That counts for small guns. We could offer our most prized possession for the resident's life. That's barter. We could ask Granny for a minigun instead. After all, we don't want to miss. That's big guns. Or we could throw our tea in our Granny's face. That's explosives. Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? We could use a bobby pin to pick the lock on the door. That, of course, counts for lockpick. We could trade a vault hoodlum for his cherry bomb and blow open the lock. This is the only one that counts for two. This one counts for both explosives and for barter. We could go to the armory, retrieve a laser pistol, and blow the lock off. That's energy weapons. Or we could walk away and let the old coot rot. That, interestingly enough, counts for repair? Question seven. Oh no, you've been exposed to radiation, and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? A bullet to the brain, which counts for small guns. Large doses of anti-mutagen agent counts for medicine. Prayer. Maybe God will spare us in exchange for a life of pious devotion. That counts for barter. Or removal of the mutated tissue with a precision laser, which counts for energy weapons. Question 8. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book. Issue number 1. You want it. What's the best way to obtain it? We could trade the comic book for one of our own valuable possessions. That counts for barter. Or we could steal the comic book at gunpoint. That counts for small guns. We could sneak into the resident's quarters and steal the comic book from his desk. That counts for sneak. Or we could slip some knockout drops into the resident's Nuka Cola. Then take the comic book when he's unconscious. That counts for medicine. Question 9. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... We could loosen some bolts on some pipes. When the sink is turned on, the room will flood. That counts for repair. We could put a firecracker in the toilet. That's sure to cause some chaos. Explosives, of course. We could break into the locked medicine cabinet and replace his high blood pressure medication with sugar pills. That counts for medicine. Or finally, we could manipulate the power wattage of his razor so he'll get an electric shock the next time he shaves. That counts for lockpick. Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. This final question is a throwaway. None of these options affect our GOAT results. But of course, we don't really have an option, do we? Pencils down, people. That's it. 
the infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray as the situation warrants. After Mr. Broch walks to his desk, if we wait around a bit, we can learn how some of the other students scored. Here you are, Mr. Broch. I hope I did okay. Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Almodovar. Let's see. Very well done. Looks like it's the supervisory track for you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Yo, teach! I'm done! Ah, Butch. Can I admit that I've been waiting for this day for a long, long time? Allow me to savor the moment. Now then, let's see. Hmm. Really? Interesting. You surprised me, Butch. I didn't think you had it in you. Hairdresser! Who would have thunk it? You're so full of it. That isn't true. I'm all done, Mr. Broch. I guess. Uh, wait a second. Can I have it back? I think I need to change one of my answers. Just calm down a minute, Paul. I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, just as I thought. You're slated for the engineering track. Congratulations, Mr. Hannon. You've passed the GOAT. Oh, gee. That's not so bad. Engineering, all right. Mother can't wait to find out if I'll be going into science or home economics. Science? Uh, well, perhaps. Let's see what the GOAT says. Well, well. Maintenance department. I hope your mother will be pleased. I'm sure Stanley will be. What? That's impossible. I'm telling father. He won't let you get away with this. Here. What's the stupid test say I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? Now, now, Susie. Is that any way to talk about the infallible goat? You will be... <clears throat> you'll be going into teaching. No doubt due to your gift for communication. Don't worry. It isn't as bad as it sounds. About what I figured. I guess I'll see you around, Edwin. Edwin? Not Mr. Broch? Okay. I'm finished here. Don't you want to find out what you got? Now nah, I already know what it says. Hardly takes a rocket scientist to crack that joke of a test. Freddy Gomez is the only one who never finishes the test. Hey, what did you put for number 10? And apparently for obvious reasons. He stays here no matter how long we wait. Nearby, we can read a chalkboard. Today, the GOAT. Due next week, Big Book of Science, page 927. Combating airborne bacteria. Christy Kendall puts out. Central themes of Charles Dickens' Bleak House. The role of the mother figure. Poverty, romance, and bureaucracy. And at the very bottom, Brotch the Crotch. Oh, high school. Fun times. At last, we can check in with Mr. Broch to learn our results. If our answers tagged explosives higher than anything else, we get... It says here you're perfectly suited for a career as a waste management specialist. A specialist, mind you. Not just a dabbler. Congratulations. If our choices tagged barter as the prevalent skill, we get... They say the goat never lies. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. If our prevalent skill was big guns... Well, according to this, you're in line to be trained as a laundry cannon operator. First time for everything, indeed. If it was energy weapons... It's nice to know I can still be surprised. Pedicurist. I might have guessed manicurist, or even masseuse. But apparently, you're a foot person. If it was lockpick... Huh. Vault loyalty inspector. I thought that had been phased out decades ago. Well, sounds like a job right up your alley, hmm? If it was melee weapons... Looks like the diner's going to get a new fry cook. I'll just say this once. Hold the mustard, extra pickles. <laughs> if it was repair... Yeah. Thank goodness. We're finally getting a new jukebox technician. 
That thing hasn't worked right since old Joe Palmer passed. If it was science... Well, well. Pip-Boy programmer, eh? Stanley will finally have someone to talk shop with. If it was small guns... Huh. I wonder who will be brave enough to be your first customer as the vault's new tattoo artist. I promise it won't be me. If it was sneak... Apparently your management material. You're going to be trained as a shift supervisor. Could I be talking to the next overseer? Stranger things have happened. And if it was speech... Wow. Wow. It says here you're going to be the vault's marriage counselor. Almost makes me want to get married. Just to be able to avail myself of your services. There are two more that I couldn't get to trigger, even when I answered all of the questions correctly. If our prevalence skill is unarmed, we should get the Little League Coach job. Broch would say, I always thought you'd have a career in professional sports. You're the new Little League Coach. Congratulations. And if our prevalence skill was medicine, we should have gotten the Clinical Test Subject job. And if we did, Broch would have said, Interesting. Clinical Test Subject. Sounds like something you should excel at. I guess you and your dad will be working together. At any rate, no matter what job we are offered, we find the same three dialogue options. We can say, whatever, I just answered randomly. Is this how you got stuck with your job? Ha! Closer to reality than you might think. That can't be right. The stupid test is all wrong. Listen, I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously. And look where I ended up. Just between you and me... The whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. And with that, we can see our tag skills and choose completely different ones if we want to. Or we can say, wow, that's what I've always wanted to be. My dreams are finally coming true. Yes, um, it's refreshing to see such, uh, youthful enthusiasm. Good to know that the goat occasionally gets it right. You know what they say about monkeys and typewriters. Well, I'm glad things turned out so well for you. I hope your classmates find their results half as satisfying. And we also find an option to re-choose our tag skills. When done, we leave the classroom and we get teleported three years into the future. But we're out of time. We'll continue with the Lone Wanderer's childhood at Vault 101 in tomorrow's video. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I manually update Twitter with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new episodes. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor stepped out for a while. What do you do? Thank you.